Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Melanie Goodrich, and I am the pre-employment support navigator here at Reachability. Today, we are very proud to host Kate Clark and Catherine Deterbid of Peach Research. Today, they're going to discuss the research behind their newly launched app, Candid Access. We would like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We are honored to work and serve on this land. We stand with the protesters across Canada and the globe, demanding an end to racism, discrimination, and violence. We acknowledge the deep and powerful changes faced by all marginalized communities in Nova Scotia, Canada, and beyond. So I'll introduce you to our two guests here today. We have Kate Clark. She is the project coordinator of the PEACH Research Unit. PEACH stands for Planning for Equity, Accessibility, and Community Health. This is through Dalhousie University's School of Planning. Uh, Kate has co-authored reports on the design and implementation of accessibility features in the built environment, as well as publishing on accessible housing standards and the need for disability perspectives in planning scholarships. So we're really excited to have her. And with her is Catherine. She is a research analyst at the Peach Research Unit, as well as a Dalhousie graduate, having completed her Master of Planning degree in 2020. Prior to those studies, she obtained a Bachelor of Environmental Design Studies in Architecture, as well as a Bachelor of Science in Honors in Biology. So her interests include transit-oriented development, urban design, and healthy communities. So as we can see, both of these people have a lot of experience, a lot of passion for accessibility in the built environment, and that's really influenced the research. So I'm gonna hand things over to the experts here. They're going to do a nice presentation, a demonstration of the app, and then we'll just all three chat together afterwards. Take it away. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, hello, everyone. And thanks for your interest in our presentation today. Um, we want to thank Reachability for inviting us to talk about ourselves and about uh, Candid Access today as part of their National Accessibility Week. Um, we're very happy to be here and uh, excited to be sharing this research activity with you. So I'm going to share some slides. And let me just make this full screen. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we are excited to be sharing Candid Access with you today. We hope you'll all be inspired to contribute to the Candid Access web map yourselves by the end of this presentation uh, and to share it with others who are passionate about accessibility for everyone. So, perfect. So yeah, as Melanie introduced us, uh, I'll just say again, my name is Kate Clark and uh, I'm here with Catherine Turbid. And we're both researchers with the Peach Research Unit at Dalhousie University. And uh, Dr. Makiko Terashima is an associate professor with the faculty of the School of Planning at Dalhousie. And she is responsible for the creation of Peach as a research group and is Peach's lead researcher. Uh, so as Melanie said in our introduction, Peach is actually an acronym. We're not referring to the fruit. Um, and it stands for Planning for Equity, Accessibility, and Community Health. So we're a group of full-time researchers, faculty members, and students at Dalhousie who collaborate with community partners um, on projects that aim to grow our knowledge and understanding of accessibility, equity, health, and wellness, and uh, how we can better apply those principles in planning practices and policies. So, Part of our role is, of course, to grow academic uh, knowledge and um, contribute to our field of research, which is the intersection between health and planning. Um, and the other part of our role is to bridge the gap between academic knowledge and community knowledge. So we do this by working closely with community partners who have uh, firsthand experience of disability and uh, other inequities in the built environment um, and who then share their experiences with us and we perform outreach to share uh, what we learn through our projects and advocate for greater awareness of these inequities and how we could build better, uh, more inclusive communities. Many of our projects involve government partners, uh, which is great because uh, then hopefully they can use our work to inform policies that they implement. So before we get to talking about Candid Access specifically, uh, I wanna give you an idea of what kind of work we do at Peach. 
uh, just by going through an, uh, a few of the other projects that we have going on. So the Samosa study, um, by now you're probably noticing we like food themed acronyms, so that's another acronym. <laughs> but the uh, Samosa study, um, through that we're looking to create uh, and assess indicators for healthy communities. And this has included locating sources of healthy food in communities, the availability of recreation spaces for active transportation and exercise, uh, the location and quality of public transit stops um, and uh, other indicators. And the goal of this project is to gain a better understanding of uh, the relationship between individual health outcomes, such as um, the prevalence of chronic illnesses in a community and the availability of certain community services and amenities. With the Staying Put and Staying Well project, we're looking at healthy community indicators again, but through the lens of a stay at home order during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this project is looking at average proximities to essential services for residents of HRM communities and uh, neighborhood walkability scores and whether the current standard of walkability scoring is truly inclusive of everybody's access needs. Uh, and finally, you probably or maybe heard about the uh, Spaces That Work For Me project if you attended the uh, presentation yesterday by Katie Vaughn uh, with Megan McDonald um, of Community Links Nova Scotia. So this is um, a continuation of a project and uh, in this, in the, the work with Community Links, we're engaging with older adults and um, asking them to tell us what makes them feel more comfortable to age in place in their communities. So this is one of several photo voice studies that we've conducted and are continuing to conduct. Um, and uh, for instance, an associate of ours, uh, Amanda Casey is working on a photo voice project, hearing from persons with intellectual disabilities about their experience of accessibility in Antigonish, Nova Scotia. So as we move forward with these photo voice projects, we'll be working to bring the results together um, to learn from all the perspectives that are shared with us from different groups of persons with uh, accessibility needs. An example of one of our outreach activities that I would like to highlight is the First Person Narratives Lecture Series. So we've been fortunate to host several lectures um, and presentations by persons with uh, firsthand experience of disability. Um, and they have shared with us their experience of barriers in the built environment uh, and what design features could remove those barriers and enable more um, inclusive access in public spaces for them. So we invite you to visit our YouTube channel or view these videos through our website on peachresearch.ca. Um, we've received really great feedback uh, on this lecture series and uh, are very thankful for the speakers who have um, presented with us so far. With this slide, uh, we just wanted to acknowledge some of our partners and affiliated organizations. So we're always looking to expand who we work with and collaborate with. So please reach out if you have any questions about our research or are interested in how you, uh, your organization or your business can get involved. So what we're mostly talking about today and it, which is a big part of our research right now is uh, looking at the design of our built environment and what makes it accessible or inaccessible for different users. So the built environment refers to anywhere that is constructed or shaped for human use. And as planners, we have the most influence over public spaces. So our research uh, focuses on learning about public buildings, streets, parks, trails, um, and anywhere that's meant for public use. Uh, we know that these spaces have structural and environmental barriers that limit individuals' ability to participate fully in their communities, or the social life, um, employment opportunities, and other everyday activities. Um, so our Tactical Urbanism Project is one of our large projects looking at how to design public spaces um, that are more accessible than the current standards for accessibility. Uh, due to limitations imposed by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we've turned to more kind of virtual space to uh, engage with Nova Scotians and explore spatial accessibility for this project. So, for instance, we're working on developing things like 3D models um, to reimagine spaces in Halifax, and those will be up on our website soon. Um, but Candid Access is another virtual research activity that we're using to inform this tactical urbanism project. 
So that's my very long preamble. Um, and by now you're probably wondering what is Candid Access and you know how, how do you use it? So I'm going to pass it over to Catherine now to talk a bit more about the details. Thanks so much, Kate. Um, yes, my name is Catherine. Uh, I'm so happy to be here and to talk to you guys about this really exciting project we've been working on called Candid Access. Um, so first I'm gonna give kind of an overview of what it is, and then we'll give a little demo of how to use it. Uh, so Candid Access uh, is a website that includes a collection of crowdsourced photos across the province of Nova Scotia uh, and includes features of the built environment that either help or hinder accessibility. Uh, so by crowdsourced, we mean that anyone can upload their photos and descriptions of accessibility features uh, in your community. Uh, so the main, the purpose of Candid Access is twofold. Um, it is an online platform to share photos and information about the accessibility of your community's built environment. Uh, and its main feature is a crowdsourced web map uh, where you can view photos and descriptions of accessibility features that people have uh, uploaded to the website. Um, and for us at Peach, it's a really valuable research tool uh, that allows us to curate photos and comments uh, so that we can learn from your firsthand experiences with the built environment. Uh, so down the road, we plan to analyze this data and to share our findings so that we can advocate for more accessible communities. Uh, so this is an infographic showing kind of the gist of how Candid Access works. Um, essentially, anyone can take a photo of a feature that they'd like to share and upload to the website. Uh, once you're on the website, people accessing the map will be able to see the photo that you took where you took it and also the description that you've given to it. Uh, so if you have a feature like this where you want to highlight, like, yes, this is great, I wanna highlight this, um, it will indicate with an emoji uh, that it is a positive accessibility feature. Uh, so we created this using uh, Esri products. Uh, so as a research unit at Dalhousie, we have access to Esri suite of online mapping platforms. Uh, so we used ArcGIS story maps for the website and Survey123 as our questionnaire form that you will be filling out in order to participate. And just a few things that you should know, general kind of rules of use. Um, all photo submissions are anonymous, so it would be really great to avoid taking photos where people's faces are visible, um, as well as photos of private businesses or property. Uh, we're, as Kate mentioned, we're looking at the built environment in a sense of public spaces. Uh, so streets, sidewalks, public parks, et cetera. Um, we also just want you to be sure to be careful when taking photos. We really don't want anyone walking into traffic and getting hurt in the pursuit of a perfect photo. Um, and also note that we can't remove photos, but we will be monitoring the submissions as they come in to ensure that they meet the terms and conditions that are agreed upon at the end of each questionnaire. Uh, so for example, if there's inappropriate language used in the description, uh, we'll be able to alter it before it gets published. Um, oh, sorry, Kate, one more thing. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so in the questionnaire, there is a set of terms and conditions that you agree to when you're submitting your photo. Um, that includes all the details that you'll need to know for that, but just wanna keep in mind that we'll be using these photos for research purposes. So they may appear in future publications or presentations that we do. Uh, so with that, we have a little video demo to demonstrate how to use the app. Bear with me while I just switch to the video here. Um, is that appearing in full screen by chance? Um, it looks like it on my end. Okay. Yes. Great. We just want to make sure everyone can, has a good view of the video. <laughs> um, okay. Here we go. Movie time. So you can find Candid Access via the Peach Research website, which is peachresearch.ca. 
and navigating to the Candid Access Research page via the Accessible Design tab at the top. And from here, you can get onto Candid Access directly, or you can learn more about the project by scrolling down on this page. Uh, and then on this page, you will also find the link that you can follow to the Candid Access web map. This is the Candid Access main page. Uh, the tabs at the top of the page can quickly take you to the area that you wish to view, or you can scroll down to the Candid Access map uh, that contains all the submitted photos. And this is also where you can add your own submissions. as you can see, you can click points on the map to enlarge the photos, or you can scroll through the photos that are displayed on the left side and the map will highlight their location. Uh, and as I said before, the emojis, they're there to indicate whether the feature is a barrier or enhancement to accessibility. Um, so all photos that are submitted are also displayed with alt text on the Peach Research website in a photo gallery. So next, we're going to demonstrate how to upload a photo to the Candid Access map. Uh, so in this case, this person is, taken, is going to take a photo of a nicely shaded sidewalk that makes it pleasant for them to walk. Now they've gone to the Candid Access web map and clicked on the add a photo button. And this opens a page with two options. Um, if you don't already have the Survey123 app downloaded onto your device, uh, then you can continue by using your browser. Uh, so the questionnaire that opens will ask you to upload your photo, uh, pin its location on the map, unless you're using GPS on your mobile device. Uh, identify the feature in your photo as a barrier or enhancement to accessibility and ask you to type in a description. So the questionnaire will also ask if you identify as a person with disabilities. And if you say yes, it will ask you to select what type of disability you experience. Um, this information informs our research and will not be made public. Uh, so once you've done that, then you'll accept the terms and conditions and you can go ahead and click submit. like that, your photo will be uploaded to our map. Uh, so if you're familiar with using your mobile, de mobile devices app store, uh, we encourage you to download the Survey123 app. Uh, so this app is free to download to use and does not require you to make an account. Um, so this, in this video, there's a phone with the Survey123 app already downloaded and the user has already gone through the process to link the Candid Access Questionnaire to the app using the Survey123 app.
Uh, so going back to the Candid Access web map, um, if you scroll down, there is a second map at the bottom of the page uh, that shows other accessibility features in HRM. Uh, so you can navigate to it through the More Accessibility Information tab as well. Uh, and it shows the location of public washrooms, accessible street parking, uh, and road and sidewalk closures. Uh, this data is taken from HRM open data, so it's only available for within HRM. Um, so yeah, at the end of that video, we covered it very quickly, but we mentioned uh, survey one, two, three. Um, if it's still unclear from the video, or if you're just not familiar with downloading apps generally, um, we've created a tech support page on the um, Peach Research website that includes a video that goes through all the details of how to download and use the app. Uh, so you can access that through peachresearch.ca slash tech support. Okay, so just before we start taking questions, um, I just have a couple more points before we wrap up with the presentation. So um, first, uh, I just wanted to, to say that we launched Candid Access just last month. So we're still learning about what we can do to make your experience with it easier, uh, such as when interacting with the site or downloading the Survey123 app. Um, so if you have any questions or comments for us as you start to explore the map, which we hope you will, uh, please email us and uh, we will uh, get back to you as soon as possible on that and, and see how we can make your experience better. Um, second, I just wanted to draw together uh, our presentation with something I've heard in other presentations from this week uh, through National or, uh, <laughs> Accessibility Week Awareness. Um, sorry, not awareness, National Accessibility Week. Um, so during the presentation on Tuesday, I believe it was with uh, the National or Nova Scotian Accessibility Directorate. I gotta slow down, I'm just speaking too quickly. <laughs> um, the topic came up about how uh, the built environment itself, it has a big imp impact on accessibility, but the resources for uh, communication and information sharing are just as important for enabling uh, accessible travel and community living for persons with disabilities. So we've already received really great feedback um, from some community members who feel that the information that is shared on the Candid Access map um, will help them uh, when navigating the built environment and, and getting an idea of what level of accessibility, of accessibility exists along different routes or at different destinations that they might go to. Um, or it might just help them stay informed about uh, what might be accessible to some while being inaccessible to others. So we hope that Candid Access can serve not only as a data collection tool, but also an information resource that can be widely shared um, to assist individuals and uh, share knowledge between communities. So with that, we'll wrap up the presentation and, and have a little discussion with Melanie. <laughs> Thank you both so much. And, and I know how exciting it is for you both to have launched this. Um, I can imagine how exciting it is moving forward to get that feedback because that's part of what makes things work better, right? Is that constructive criticism and thinking, I didn't think of that, or that would be a, a really great way to, to do things. So just a few questions about the, the app um, and the candid access itself. So how is participating using the app different from participating through the website? Um, oh, Catherine, do you want to take it? Okay. 
Yeah, sure. Sorry, I was just <laughs> the button. Um, yeah, I can take that one. Um, so basically for anyone who's comfortable using a mobile device and who has a data plan for internet on that device, uh, the Survey123 app is a really great option um, because you can upload your photo right from the location where you take the photo. Um, so for anyone um, who is more comfortable taking pictures and uploading them at a later time, once you're home again, like for example, if you don't have a data plan or you don't have a smartphone, you can upload to the map directly from the website. Uh, so the survey and submission process are exactly the same and it will appear the same way on the map, uh, but one survey one, two, three has a few additional features that make it potentially more convenient for um, certain people. Awesome. Yeah, I, I went in um, last week and, and went through and tried to use the website. I didn't have a picture, so I didn't fully commit um, and, and actually submit anything. Um, and the, the app was just as easy, except my phone um, is, is a little bit ancient, so it wasn't allowing me to download because I didn't have enough space. But I could get to that point very easily. So both are very simple, very straightforward ways to access it. But like you said, I think it's just a preference thing as well at, at some point too. Awesome. Um, so with, with this, we talk a lot about barriers, enhancements, people living with disabilities, mobility issues. Would you say that this is specifically for that population or is it meant for anyone to use? Yeah, so our, um, we understand accessibility as being for everyone, whether or not you identify as someone who experiences a disability. So anything in the built environment that uh, prevents you from feeling safe or able to use or, or participate in a space um, is a barrier to accessibility and anything that makes you your use of the space um, easier or more comfortable or independent um, is an enhancement to accessibility in that space. So uh, all are welcome to contribute to the map. Excellent. And I know you mentioned that the, the data that you got for the second map, the one that has the bathrooms and the sidewalks is HRM only. Is the Candid Access app HRM as well or is it Nova Scotia wide? Uh, so it is Nova Scotia wide. Um, we want all Nova Scotians who are interested in the Candid Access activity to feel like they can contribute to this map uh, from their community. So we've, I checked this morning to see how many submissions we had and we've got um, nearly 40 already. We only launched the app um, like in mid-May, so it's looking really good. And uh, we do have some submissions from the Valley already. So that's really good to see. And we'd like to keep seeing that um, as we continue. Um, so yes, for our research purposes, however, we will be starting our analysis with the photos that are submitted within the boundaries of HRM uh, with the intention to expand that analysis to be Nova Scotia wide as we move forward. Excellent. And that's really great to hear that you're seeing uptake in other areas outside of HRM because I, I know just from discussions that I've had this week and, and leading up to other panels and, and things like that, that this is something that a lot of other communities feel a little left out on is this discussion, especially rural communities, things like transportation and um, just accessibility in general is really important, but it's it's often overlooked in those areas. So it's great to hear that, you know, you're starting as, as home base here where you went to school and where you have the resources, but that you're also looking at stretching out into those other often overlooked areas of Nova Scotia as well. That's really great. And how long will it, it be online? Is there a deadline for submissions? So the research project uh, that Candid Access is a part of will be completed in March 2022, but we plan to keep Candid Access as the web map uh, up and operating beyond that point um, because we want to see this stay as a, a useful tool for community members to view and use into the future. So, um, so yeah, there's no rush to get involved, like there's no, there's no cutoff, but we really hope that you, you get involved soon um, and continue to use this um, you know, into foreseeable future. <laughs> Excellent, so if people are interested, they should just, is there a, a specific contact information for the app that they should contact? If they have questions, concerns, comments. Um, our email uh, at peach at dell.ca is, um, you know, the, the contact information, like um, it's monitored and uh, daily and, you know, we, that is, that is the, the 
contact point for any questions that you have as you're, you're going about looking at our website or Canada Access. Excellent, and that's an easy one to remember. Well, <laughs> excellent. Um, so I want to just ask a, a few more questions just about both of your experiences, just in the field of accessible built environments, accessibility planning, um, because as we were chatting a little bit pre-panel, um, you're both young, you're recent graduates, and in, in an aging community such as Nova Scotia, and also in a community where a lot of, of you know, educated young people do move out, <laughs> do emigrate. Um, how did you get into this type of research? What's the, the message? What's the drive behind getting into this research? Um, and what's the message that you want to get out for accessible built environments in general? Either, either one, I want to hear from both of you, but who would like to start? <laughs> Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I first got involved in this research um, through Dr. Michiko Terashima's um, work and uh, seeing what the Peach Research Unit was doing because I went to the Dahazi School of Planning and could, like, a, several of my friends worked uh, with Michiko there. So that's where I kind of started to get interested. And the more I've been involved, the more I realized how important it really is. And I've just been doing a, uh, uh, Kate and I have also been doing this Rick Hansen um, uh, certification course where it really draws a lot more attention to uh, accessibility issues that you, know, you don't, even, you might not ordinarily think about. So for example, now after having taken that course and after working with Peach for the past few months, um, you see the built environment in a very different way. Like you see, a curb cut that, you know, normally you wouldn't even bat an eye at. And then you realize, oh, that could be very dangerous. Like this is way too narrow. Like if somebody was in a wheeled mobility device and, uh, you know, really needed to get onto the sidewalk, it would be impossible. So I think, um, yeah, the more I've been immersed with Peach, the more I've realized how important um, the built environment uh, is for everyone to access. Yeah, um, I want to echo everything Catherine said, but also I think uh, it started for me with my undergraduate degree uh, experience in environmental anthropology, which is something that not a lot of people um, heard about, but uh, I had a number of courses looking at you know this relationship between you know people and the the settlements we create and the way that we interact with our uh, environment all around us, um, and so that's ultimately what what got me looking at planning as a career path, um, and I just I strongly believe that people should be shaping our communities and shaping what our environments look like, and you know historically there are so many groups of people who have been excluded from that conversation and are who are just not considered in, in the design and development of spaces and um, you know, the settlements, uh, land use, and, and all of these kinds of you know, tools that planning uses um, to create our neighborhoods and the places where we live and, and work and, um, and learn. So I, yeah, when this opportunity came to work with uh, Dr. Mikiko Terashima at Peach um, and really start filling that gap that, that exists in planning knowledge for, um, for building accessibility. Um, I, was, I was just really happy to take that opportunity. Excellent. And I think the kind of threads from both of, of your experiences and what you've said as somebody who has not gone to planning school, um, but now I've spent a lot of time with people who have gone to planning school in the last week, um, just looking at the, the pictures that are already on the app, there's one uh, that really struck my, my, my mind when I looked at it, it's a crosswalk that leads directly into a telephone pole. And I'm thinking in walking down the street, I, I before kind of thinking about accessible environments, inclusion, those kinds of things, I may not have noticed or even acknowledged that that was an issue because for me, it's not right. 
But just because for me, it's not a, a barrier, that doesn't mean that for somebody else, it's not a barrier. So I think it's, it's a really simple way using photos to show, like Katie said yesterday, a picture is worth a thousand words. We don't have to explain why this isn't a good idea. We just look at it and we know, okay, <laughs> that, that doesn't really work. So um, I think some of the, the other work that you're, you're doing, it's, it's like education into action pieces as well, right? So even looking at the staying put and staying well that you were speaking about before, that sounds really incredible. You're taking a current situation that's happening and using it to your advantage to make change and, and enact a, a difference, which is really awesome. So with all of the research that you're doing, because it's all really important and it's all really great, if you can't tell, it's very fascinating to me at least, who do you think should be seeing this research? Yeah, I think ultimately um, we hope that this research will be informing you know, the decision makers out there um, about you know, what, what we need to push for in our communities. And uh, there's a lot of talk uh, lately about you know, building back better you know, after this, this kind of pandemic situation. So, um, I think there's a huge opportunity um, and, and right now like a momentum too in Nova Scotia, especially with the Accessibility Act and, and moving towards you know, standards for the built environment um, in being you know, regulated in, in Nova Scotia. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, like we're, we're getting there and we hope that this will like inform that conversation and, and keep moving it forward. Awesome. Well, you both are, are so inspiring and so um, just it's exciting to, to look at all the things that you're doing. And I'm, I'm glad that we ran across each other and that we were able to highlight some of the, the amazing work that you're doing so that you can continue to keep making HRM and, and Nova Scotia a better, more accessible place, even just a more informed place. Um, and having that first voice experience of people being able to actually submit what they're seeing, what they're feeling how they're going through their communities will hopefully help them to feel uh, a little bit more heard and a little bit more included in the community as well. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. Any final messages, anything you want to share or let, let everyone know about? Uh, we just uh, invite everyone to, um, you know, to get involved and reach out. We want to hear from everybody. Um, on your experiences uh, of you know inequity in your communities and 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 also like highlight the candid acts is a great opportunity to highlight the, the successes too like what's what's really great in your community what in, enables accessibility for you and what would you like to to see therefore you know put elsewhere um, so so yeah if if this conversation today interested you please you know, look at our website at peachresearch.ca or start following us on Facebook which is just at peach research. Um, and uh, we're always trying to keep everyone updated on, on what we're doing um, and always welcome conversations with community members. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for, for joining. We'll wrap things up for today. And best of luck to both of you individually and collectively and best of luck to Peach Research in general. I know we'll, we'll be in touch in the future um, for sure to keep, keep highlighting and keep working together. Thank you so much for having us. All right, thanks so much.